I'm Nick Majerus and this is the Top Med Talk Top 10. And this series is a chance for new listeners to jump on board and, of course, for established listeners to catch up with some of our favourite podcasts so far, as voted for by downloads. In no particular order, we're having a look at some absolutely classic episodes. And this one has a very powerful title. It's called I Want to Dance at My Daughter's Wedding. We think it's a really important piece. Have a listen. Top Bed Talk. Thank you for having us. Uh, my name is Kevin Bozick, and as was mentioned, I'm a chair of surgery and perioperative care at the Dell Medical School at UT Austin. I'm an orthopedic surgeon, and I have, throughout my career, really tried to gain a better understanding of the impact of what we do in the healthcare profession on our patients. And I was frustrated by the types of tools that we were using to measure that, process measures, structural measures. And those are not things that resonated with my patients. As an orthopedic surgeon, my goal is to improve the health of the people that I treat by optimizing their quality of life, reducing their pain, and improving their function. And I learned early on that uh, the only way to improve those is to measure them and measure them rigorously uh, in every patient and every encounter. And so I've been on this journey now for about 15 years and um, uh, have been through uh, the the uh, evolution that's occurred um, in this country, and I'm very uh, optimistic and enthusiastic about uh, the direction it's going, especially with conferences like this and being able to uh, attract a multidisciplinary group of people from the AARP, from patients to uh, providers of, of different uh, disciplines and and payers to really come together around this goal because ultimately I believe that for all of us, no matter where we sit, all of us in healthcare, our goal is to optimize the health of the patients that we come in contact with. And Eric, can you tell us a little bit about what you do and, and why value-based care matters to you? Well, I have the privilege of being the uh, volunteer president of AARP and I serve on the National Board of Directors, and my position gives me the great pleasure of going out and meeting our members and the communities in which they serve throughout the country. They're just a great group of people who really want to make life better in a variety of ways for people, you know, not only those 50 plus, but their children in particular. So we work on on programs, and at the health sector, We have a a view that I think I can summarize as saying that obviously the healthcare system is incredibly important, health outcomes are important, but we think that our members many times, uh, you know, have a view that they're not getting exactly, you know, what they want. Many times you go into healthcare and the question is, should you have an operation or a procedure? But our members really tell us that they want They want health so that they can do something. The famous example, a woman said, I want treatment so I can dance at my daughter's wedding. I want to be happy. I want to be fulfilled. And so to do that, what AARP is finding is that there are a number of practical measures that we can push for. We can't do everything. One of the measures is people benefit from having a health professional who works with them, helps them navigate through the health maze, Uh, get them the things that make their life better. That may not be a doctor. It may be a nurse, a nurse practitioner. It may be a nutritionist if they have a a nutrition problem. So let's configure the healthcare system so that those skills are available to people that may be more effective for them than, than some medical procedure. So we push for expanded scope of practice for nurses and nurse practitioners. Uh, we hopefully support plans which uh, take a look in the in the range of health care services provided, take a look at issues like isolation, take a look at uh, people who are depressed, and maybe by dealing with something like that, dealing with a hearing loss, you will drastically minimize the number of health issues they have, and in many cases for a great deal less money. So AARP is looking at what the members want, and they tell us that they want issues looked at that may be uh, outside the normal range of medical practice, but that would make their life better. And then we go into the arena of policy, both federal and local, and try to get those measures included in health care. I wanted to just follow up on a point that was just made, that if you look at what we in this country spend on social services, it's about 
it's about average. It's about the median for OECD countries, but it's disproportionately spent on care and health care as opposed to other social services, which we know heavily influence health. And so our model in Austin is we, we really are truly trying to improve the health of the community that we, that we practice in. And in order to do that, we realize that only about 10 to 15 percent of someone's health is influenced by the care they receive from health care professionals. So it requires interaction with educators, with uh, other types of social services. It requires uh, uh, safe places to live. It requires um, a healthy diet. There's so many other things that play into socioeconomic status, education, um, that we understand that thinking uh, and isolating um, care as the, uh, as the primary tool to improve health is, uh, is not very effective. And that's exactly what, what we believe and what has been so stimulating about this conference is that you have highly skilled medical professionals who recognize that the full range of services can be far more effective collectively than you know, individual ones. And this is, seems to be going mainstream by some, I must say, very eminent people in the field. Top Med Talk. It's a personal favorite of mine and also... It's a clip taken from a longer conversation, which you can listen to in full on the Top Med Talk website. We've included a link in the show notes. Don't forget, of course, you can meet the Top Med Talk team. All you need to do is check out our website, topmedtalk.com, and then sign up for the email updates. As soon as you've done that, you'll find out where we're going to be, where we're going to go, and where we have been. We'll also tell you when we're broadcasting live from the Top Med Talk website. So get yourself there as soon as you can, topmedtalk.com, and sign up for the email updates.